On today's show, Adam Silver came out and explained, or at least tried to, the Robert Sarver punishment. It went poorly. I have a theory as to why it went so bad. And then we'll play Count It Up, the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. Steph Curry making a billion dollars from Under Armour. Luka, Giannis, and Jokic all eliminated from Eurobasket. All kinds of great stuff coming up on Locked On NBA. Let's go. And welcome. You are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast. Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show, grow the channel, is to comment anything below. Let us know what show you're coming from. If we're your second listen from Locked On Bulls or Locked On Mavs, go put that in the comment section and then let us know. Uh, let us know what you what was your response to the to the Adam Silver. Um, press conference and all that. Oof, there was some there were some responses to that. But let us know in the comment section what your favorite team is, which show you're coming from. Joining me, as always on a Thursday, not really, first time from Lockdown Bulls, the other half of Lockdown Bulls. What you got for me, Hayes? What's going on, man? I, I apologize that you have to do with Pat week in and week out, but you know <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I'm uh, glad to be here though. This may be this may be interesting because now it's the two the two drivers of their own show now now together on this show. We're gonna have to, we have to fight for the wheel here a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about, and we got to start with Adam with uh, Adam Silver's press conference on Robert Sarver because it was kind of wild. Like it was kind of wild yeah. because you think about Adam Silver's tenure as an NBA commissioner, and the NBA the commissioner's jobs in all sports are kind of overblown to me. It's sort of like the 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 PR like 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 guy that runs the the owners group right because it's the owners yeah. their only NBA like it's not the NBA and then there's all these you know, it's it's Adam Silver is just kind of like making sure all the owners work together right like he works yeah. for he he says a lot of times when he talks he works for the owners so it's so interesting to hear us talk about the commissioner's job in all sports and talk about how it seems like some people try, try to say that the commissioner is like over all these owners. And at a certain point yeah. he does provide some oversight. And this is one of those areas where you'd think he would, he would provide some oversight on it. But the Robert Sar- Sarver ruling came down about everything. You can go check out locked on sons. They had a great episode about it where they explain all of it in detail. It took them 40 minutes to <laughs> basically explain everything that's happening in this. Cause there's just a lot of different stuff with the, with the Robert Sarver ruling it came down Gave him the $10 million maximum fine. That's the maximum that the NBA allows somebody to be fined. He is now going to be suspended from his team for a year because of comments that he made using the N-word, misogynistic comments, misogynistic acts, revealing himself to people. Like Just so much awful stuff that Robert Sarver did over the years. And Adam Silver came out in front of the press and had kind of an explainer. All right, this is why we came to this ruling. And it looked like he wasn't prepared for questions. Did it, Hayes? Yeah. No, it honestly looked like he just didn't think anybody was going to have any follow up questions, which is like what (laughs) this is one of the biggest stories in sports right now. Do you think no one was going to have a question? What he should have done is he should have allowed Mark Cuban to do this press conference because Mark Cuban would have been transparent with it. That's what he should have allowed to happen. Uh, I have other thoughts. <laughs> Maybe have a, as someone that has covered the Mavs very closely. I may have other thoughts about that. The Mavs went through their own thing a couple years ago. This is true. That this we can talk true. about. But I have a, yeah. this is my theory about why it went so poorly. And the, and the reason why people thought it went poorly, let's I guess let's do that first. The reason why people thought it went poorly was um, Adam Silver came out and people were asking him great questions. Howard Beck asked him a question about, well, if any employee of the NBA or if any employee of any individual team did any one of the things that Robert Sarver is is reported to have done, and they did like over 300 interviews asking all these different people about things Robert Sarver has done, and a lot of stuff came out of it. If any employee had done any one of those things, they would have been fired. So yeah. what's the difference between that? And Adam Silver responded, quote, there are particular rights here to someone who owns an NBA team as opposed to someone who is an employee. Uh, he talked trying to answer the question about Robert Sarver. It's different than holding a job. That quote to me really stuck out as one to say, okay, well, the owners just have different rules. There's different rules yeah. if you own something than if you're an employee. That didn't sit well with people. The other thing that um, came out, a lot, of, a lot of answers that Adam Silver gave, and he said this a couple, like three or four times I counted this during his press conference, was 
I know more info than the public does. There's more proprietary info that I know as Adam Silver than what everybody else knows. And that came off as, all right, well, if there's just so much more stuff and we just don't understand, then, you know, how can we possibly, how can we possibly understand this? But even the stuff that we already know, we don't understand how there's a connection there um, through some of these things. And I think that's one of the reasons why I went. So is there another reason you thought that it it didn't go well for him today? I mean, I think to to say like, just the answers that he did give, the things that he decided to answer and, and the way that he responded, it, it kind of just left too much room for doubt and more questions. Yes. Like saying that there's no racial or gender based animus in it. Like, all right, n- no, like that's not enough. Like that's not that's to me. That's not enough. When you when you're the owner of a team, both an NBA and a WNBA team, yeah. that is the majority, uh, you know, people of color, b- the players like and then you own a team that's women like you have we we need and deserve more answers i think in this and that information that he does have that he said that you know it's more information than what the public has like to a degree i think that should have been released a little bit because as of right now adam silver didn't put himself in the best situation he didn't put the nba in the best light either with the way that he answered these questions and i think when you leave something as serious as this with that much room of doubt it's not going to do nothing but lead to more frustration i think we've seen that in the way some players have already come out and responded to it as well You walked me right into my theory. Here's my theory as to why it went so wrong for Adam Silver, why it looked so bad for him. I mentioned at the top of the show that that he works for the owners. That's what he says a lot of times when he comes out. I remember it was 2016. I was at the NBA um, sports business classroom, which is like uh, Larry Kuhn, who's one of the, um, the, like the premier cap expert, puts on this whole class. It's like a conference class for like young people trying to come up in in journalism and in yeah. working in front offices and all kinds of great stuff. It was awesome, incredible experience. And Adam Silver came and talked to us and one of the things he said that really stuck with me was, you know, I work in a business where the 30 people that I work for, only one of them can be successful every year. <laughs> because huh. only one team wins the title. And it really yeah. stuck with me like what an interesting job he has to try and like you know have success through all these 30 teams when only one of them is happy at the end of the year, right? Like the only person happy at the end of this year is probably Joe Lacob because the Warriors yeah. won the title. Makes and sense. so that made me think about this press conference. And Adam Silver was used as a human meat shield today. He was thrown out there because it's the owners that come to decisions like this, and it's the owners that um could be the ones to vote out to vote out Sarver and push the envelope on this. Like you mentioned Mark Cuban earlier. If Mark Cuban really like pushed and tried to get a bunch of owners together to push him out, I think they could have done it. But I don't know if Adam Silver can do that. Now you point back to the Donald Sterling thing. That's when everybody got together and pushed a guy out. This was this didn't happen there. And the reason why is a Kurt Highland uh, from NBC Sports quote that he came out today and said, there's a lot of owners in glass houses who don't want to start throwing stones. And that's what and that's what it is. Right. And that leads back to Donald Sterling. Even if you remember when he was outed, he said that the NBA owners are a bunch of hypocrites. Yep. So it kind of makes you think about that as well. And I think it was even Mark Cuban's quote at the time. said that's a slippery slope. If you make somebody sell their team, even even then. And this is the slope we're talking about is is this acceptable? Is this is this kind of. uh behavior acceptable enough to where we're like all right well we just got to kind of let it go because he owns the team adam silver's quote earlier about well you know he own, there's a difference between owning a team and being an employee of a team like okay yeah. the other quote that really stuck out to me today and the question that i had before this was okay well did he do the most he could have done now he obviously didn't force him out of his team the way that they did donald sterling mm. But did he do the most? Did he do the most that he could have done as far as a one-year suspension obviously the 10 million dollars is the maximum but he was asked that question, and Adam Silver said that he had the option to suspend Sarver for longer than one year, but he chose the length of one year. He also added that Sarver has expressed complete remorse to him, but that Sarver is on notice going forward that he will continue to be scrutinized going forward. Okay, two things on that. One, if he could have done more years, then that means that there is a certain amount of acceptability that his actions had, right? Because yeah. there's a certain level that you stopped, that you stopped with a punishment. And so that's where I stop and say, all right, well, this is this is BS then, because if you could have done more, then you're accepting Adam uh, Robert Sarver's behaviors at a certain point. That's true. I mean, just by the, the letter of what you said and the quote that you read, like if you're saying that you could have done more by the, the rules of the NBA, and you chose not to. That means that you're making that decision. You're consciously making that decision to cut yeah. it off when. You could have done something more, more strong, more, more, more strict, something that actually feels like like even. 
even suspending an owner for a year, like they're still making money off the team, right? Like, yeah, like at, what, at what point does he not benefit from it, right? He's, yeah, he's like, still so you're basically giving him a paid vacation. Yeah, you you took away ten million dollars, <laughs> right? But for the for he can't come to NBA arenas, he can't attend practices, he can't go to WNBA games, NBA games, things like that. But like the team, he still owns the team. He's still going to profit off the 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 yeah. revenue that the team makes. My my thing I didn't, again that may not be allowed in the rules, but like so you're still benefiting off the people that you offended and hurt by your actions, and that's that's problematic in itself. So then the other point of this was that he you know Adam Silver or that Roberts I keep getting him confused these <laughs> these basic names Robert Adam <laughs> uh, that they that Robert Sarver had complete remorse to him. Well, Malik Andrews from ESPN pointed out something really great today that in the report. It said that that Robert Sarver had a really awful like harassment level conversation with someone in 2021. Like this 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 stuff is not years ago. This is not going back to you know oh then it was in the 90s. It was in the early 2000s. We didn't know better then. It was before the Me Too era. It was before Black Lives Matter. Like it was before all that. No, this is 2021. This is like less than eight months ago, <laughs> nine months yeah. ago that this happened. And so how can someone? like show complete remorse over something they just did so recently uh, and didn't understand. And so coming up, let's talk about the response to this because LeBron had a response that was insane about this. Chris Paul had a response and it puts the NBA in a certain, it puts the NBA on, on blast. It puts them on notice uh, and a couple other people responded. We'll talk about those responses coming up. But before we do, let me talk about bet online. It's the best place to check out the odds and lines and spreads and everything inside and outside of sports. Hayes is sporting just some great um, Bears gear right now. The Chicago Bears are a uh, 10-point underdog against the Packers right now on Bet Online. Would you? Is there any point of view, seeing how bad Aaron Rodgers was last week, would you pick, would you take the Bears at 10 points? 10 points is a lot. That's a that's a lot. I mean, it depends on what version of the Bears we get. Do we get first half Bears more, second half Bears? <laughs> well, you get I, it, hopefully you get non raining Bears, right? Because in that, Green well, Bay, I don't know if it'll rain as much. Yeah, I I, I think I take I think I take those the points. ten points. Consi- that's a lot. Considering how the Bears defense, I think they they were like top three in the league in the preseason in QB hits, and we had a, a two sacks and like three or four QB hits in the last game. I think we can rough up. Rogers a little bit. I hope so because he just irritates me. All right. So if you have as much confidence in the, <laughs> the Bears as uh, as as Hayes does, you can go check out the uh, Bet Online, all the odds and lines and everything. Go check it out. It's Bet Online where the game starts. All right, Hayes. We're continuing to talk about Robert Sarver, the whole situation with the Phoenix Suns. He's the owner of the Phoenix Suns as well as the Phoenix Mercury. There was an investigation that lasted for, I don't know, count it up, like. Uh, eight years about yeah. Robert Sarver. They interviewed 300 people. Adam Silver came down on his decision. He suspended for one year from the team as well as a $10 million fine. And now uh, Adam Silver had a press conference that just did not go well, did not go over well. My theory is that the owners used him as a human meat shield so they don't have to answer questions about their own actions or anything else and that they don't force someone out, you know, force someone off their team for stuff that they probably did at a certain point in their in their past. Yeah. A lot of response to this, a ton of response to this. And one of those responses was LeBron James himself. And this one floored me. I, I literally texted it to you and I was like, holy, like, look, look, look at this. Like, look at this response from LeBron James. This is a tweet that he tweeted. You've probably seen it by now, but if not, quote, read through the Sarver stories a few times now. I got to be honest. Our league definitely got this wrong. I don't need to explain why. Y'all read the stories and decide for, your, decide for yourself. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. There is no place in this league for that kind of behavior. I love this league and I deeply respect our leadership, but this isn't right. There is no place for misogyny, sexism, and racism in any workplace. Don't matter if you own the team or play for the team. We hold our league up as an example of our values and this ain't it. Hayes, what does that mean coming from a a player like LeBron who aspires like very publicly to be an owner one day? I mean, I think it, it have the the player of LeBron stature to speak out on this so adamantly and use and so intelligently and just the way that he worded it and being very direct in it. I think it, you're, you're going to see more players come out. You're going to see more people probably r- rally around it. And, and hats off to LeBron. Like what he does and activism and everything else has always been has never been able to be questioned. But like him coming out the, quickly afterwards too and having this statement, I think is it just shows like how we live in the player empowerment movement, right? And players have more voices or bigger voices than what they ever had. And I'm glad that LeBron used his voice to speak out on this and not be quiet on it because it needed to be said. 
I think it specifically means a lot coming from LeBron because he wants to be an owner. And he's very publicly said, I want to own a team. And there's been, you know, movement, like some movement on that of him wanting to to own a team, maybe one of the expansion teams or whatever. And for him to come out and say that our league got this wrong, he doesn't come out and say things like that very often. Yeah. Right. Like he doesn't come out and say, go against the league in such a very public way, so direct. He knew he had to say something and he knew he had to say it quick. And that's why he did it on Twitter and not like in a press conference or wait till media day or do something like that. He knew he had to do something now because it's going to be really weird for players like Chris Paul to walk into media day and Robert Sarver to still be his owner. Chris Paul had a tweet that said, quote, like many others, I reviewed the report. I, w- I was and am horrified and disappointed by what I read. This contact, especially towards women, is unacceptable and must never be repeated. I am of the f- of the view that the sanctions fell short in truly addressing what we can all agree was atrocious behavior. My heart goes out to all the people that were affected. Now Chris Paul has to walk into training camp with this guy still being the owner, albeit suspended for a year. But what does it do for a guy like Chris Paul to walk into a team like that and still have to play for them? I mean, he he resigned uh, with them after these initial allegations came out, right? The ESPN mm. report that was that came out before he, I think, he resigned with the team. So I would think that he was kind of expecting this, that he was aware that there was something going on there. But you know, him being the former head of the Players Association, I think that you know he he needed to say something. Well, he's probably going to continue to speak out on it. I do think it puts him in a weird position. All the players, but I mean, luckily they don't have to deal with him this year. So I mean. I really don't know. It's such a tough spot for them to be in. And I'm so curious yeah. as to, I mean, we, you remember how the Clippers uh, guys responded during that playoff game where they all turned their, Chris Paul was on that team too. Oh my gosh. He's, <laughs> he's been through this before. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They, they turned their, they turned their shirts inside out and they, you know, didn't want to wear the Clippers logo and they started covering things up. What brings me back to that Clippers thing. And what was brought up a couple times on Twitter today, I can't remember the exact people that did it was when it happened to Donald Sterling and Chris Paul was on that team advertisers started to pull out and that's mm. when you see movement right that's when you see movement is when the money moves when the money moves then the rest of the rest of the nba will move and i think that's a big difference here if advertisers started about what's the what's the sun's jersey sponsor what's the sun's jersey sponsor paypal what's their like the ugly, is that PayPal? what's the ugly little patch yeah <laughs> paypal with little, with little peas everybody's got an ugly patch now um <laughs> if paypal was like hey we read all this Robert Sarver stuff. We don't want to support a team like that. They back out. Then a couple others back out. And then what is their arena footprint center? Footprint was like, I don't know what we do, but we're going to back out of this now because we don't want to be associated with an owner like this. Then do you think it would change? I honestly think it would because that's what started to happen to Donald Sterling. And that's oh, why they, sure. they pushed him out. For sure. If you start affecting the bottom line, that's in any industry and in any, like things start changing. Yeah, things get revisited. If, 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 advertisers start pulling out then yeah you're gonna see you don't don't be surprised if you see this revisited soon and could chris paul and the players like sit out games and that would affect the bottom line like there's all kinds of stuff that could happen i don't know if they'll go to that route we talked we thought about that with when donald sterling stuff came out the yeah. Clippers decided to play they decided it was better for us to for them to go out and play and cover the logos and all that and make a statement that way than it would be to actually sit out especially in the playoffs but but yeah, the, uh, another response you mentioned earlier that Don Sterling also owns the Phoenix Mercury. He owns the WNBA team in Phoenix as well. Mm-hmm. Skylar Diggins uh, is a player that has asked out <laughs> Phoenix and did not want to play for the Mercury anymore this year mm-hmm. at a certain point. She had a response as well. She posted this to Instagram. It's going to be kind of it's going to be kind of interesting to, to hear this, but it's a video of a news report in Phoenix that she posted and it came with the, like the caption um I didn't know I was I didn't know I was on the news that what was it? It was like I always wanted a news clip ranting. And, and it was this. This is what Skylar Diggins basically feels about this. The Suns fans we spoke to today told us they think Sarver got off easy in light of the findings. In fact, some say he should be forced to sell the team. That he should be suspended forever. You don't do that. Like <laughs> that was Skylar <laughs> Diggins' response to this. Uh, so you can see how she feels about it. I find that interesting that he sh- he should be suspended for like that's such a direct to the point. Uh, and by the way, that that's not her voice. That's somebody who was interviewed on yeah. the news that she posted that video clip. Uh, Baxter Holmes also reported that a current Suns employee said, "quote It's barely a slap on the wrist and shows us the league truly doesn't stand for diversity, e- e- uh, equity, or inclusion." I'm grateful to have the 
the validation after being told I was insane. A B word, I'm being dramatic. That definitely let me breathe a little, but I'm angry. The league failed us when they had the opportunity to stand behind its values. And I think that's where it hurts the worst, is that some of these employees that spoke out, that were interviewed, now have to go back, and this is still their owner and the person they still work for. Do you think that there's a chance that the NBA owners over the course of this next year, next offseason, the CBA that's coming up, do they vote to actually, do you think they they change their mind and vote to get them out of it? What would change their mind? Just the response, I guess. It's, it's one of those things where, like, okay, yeah. so a, a, you know, a, a, a company releases jerseys or they release something online, just to, or release a, tra- a potential trade, just to see what the backlash is publicly, and then they go back on it. Like that's the only way that it would change. I don't see it. I think it's. I think the glass house quote earlier. You know, a lot of owners are in glass houses, don't want to start throwing stones. I feel like that's what's re- the fear of that. Fear is really controlling part of this situation. Is it fear that it will happen to them? Fear that you know. I don't know. Unless the advertisers start start backing out, like we said earlier, I think that's the okay. only reason why that they would start doing this that. But makes sense. But we'll see. It's a it's another good reminder that the NBA is not a moral compass. The NBA is a business, right? Sometimes we look yeah. to the NBA to be more. I know I mean, we talked about the NFL earlier. Sometimes I look at the NFL and be like, oh, what a ridiculous organization and blah, blah, blah. They don't care about player safety. They don't care about this. They don't care about racism. They don't care about all these things. The NBA is so much better and morally. And I start looking at it that way and you go, sometimes you just got to rem- remind yourself they're still a business too. They're yeah. still doing some of the same stuff and allowing some of these same you know, practices to happen and then things like the the Mavericks, you know, harassment suit comes out, the the you know, Robert Sarver story comes out, you know, they had the Donald Sterling thing that was happening while the NBA was 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 touting all all their like moral high ground at a certain point. It's a good time to re- remind or to remind yourself to get your moral compass from somewhere else besides somebody's business. This is facts. That's facts. All right, coming up, let's play, let's have some fun because this Robert Sarver story just it bums me out. <laughs> Let's play where we count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. We got great stuff from Steph Curry to uh, Eurobasket, all kinds of stuff. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Hayes, it's that time of the week. The most interesting, fun things in the NBA. We go across and we decide to count it up. We decide to count up some of... Count it up, count it up, count it up, count it. All right, Eurobasket. It's been a tournament happening overseas over the last couple of weeks. It's been so fun. There's been so many good games. We've talked about it on this podcast a lot. We've talked about it on Lockdown Mavs, Nuggets. I know you guys on Lockdown Bulls have talked about it. A lot of us have been talking about it because it's been so awesome. Slovenia gets knocked out today by Poland. That means that Luka, Giannis, and Jokic, the three best players in the tournament that Eurobasket was putting on every different kind of, <laughs> um, <laughs> of banner and everything, have all been eliminated. So now we're left with Germany, Spain, Poland, and France. Count it up. Rank those four teams. Woo. Uh, I'm going Spain, France, Germany, Poland. Spain, France, Germany, Poland. Poland really surprised me today. Yeah, that they guy, did. That guy that they had did. a triple-double today was balling out. And I didn't know yeah. anything about I didn't watch any of Poland's games before this. I had watched everybody else's games. Uh I, Germany with Schroeder and Franz Wagner. That team really stands out to me. Spain is just always good, but they don't have any like NBA players. But they're just always good, though, right? They're just like always they, good. They got the the Hernan Gomez brothers. They have yeah. Fernandez still. Like he's still he's still playing around. But the best player left in the tournament is is who? Is it Gobert? Franz Wagner? Yeah. Uh, Go, I think Gobert is the best player left. Go, in the yeah, tournament. it has to be Gobert. Yeah, Gobert. That's wild that he's the best player left in the tournament. I'll go. I'll go. Germany one, France two, Spain then Poland. That's fair. So it'll probably be. I, I'm thinking it's gonna be a Germany France final. That's my guess. France almost got knocked out today too by Italy. They were so close to it. Like Italy gave that game away so many different times. They went into overtime and all that. Yeah. Uh, NBA executives were surveyed to pick five players under the age of 25. They build their team around right now, and they went and ranked them. The only unanimous player was Luka Doncic. Um, Count it up. Pick your five players. You had to pick five players. These are the ones that they picked. Luca, Tatum, John Morant, Evan Mobley, Cade Cunningham, Anthony Edwards, Zion, um, Scotty Barnes, LaMelo, Trey Young, Darius Garland, Jalen Green, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, and Tyrese Halliburton. Pick five. Pick five that you would build a team around. Luca for sure. Anthony Edwards, for sure. I'm just super high on them. Evan Mobley. Uh, so that gives me three. If I... Yeah, go on Tatum. 
<sighs> you just left Tatum off. Just went to the final. I'm not as high on Tatum as some people. I, lo- I like Tatum, but I'm just, not as high on Tatum. Just went to the final. There are, there are many yeah. Celtics fans just furious at you right That's now. That's fine. Let them be mad. They'll be all right. <laughs> they're, now they're uh, mad at both Beth yeah, and they, you. Yeah, that's Multiple fine. weeks in a row. Yeah, that's fine. Don't, turn, don't tune in to Locked on Bulls. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zion, if, he, if I can guarantee Zion's going to be fully healthy. You put Zion in the oh, fully healthy thing. is if Fully healthy. If if I can guarantee he's going to be fully healthy, absolutely. That's the biggest question with him. Um, I think I have to go Tatum then. There you go. I was going to okay. leave him off. All right. I think I have to go Tatum then. So you went Luca, Anthony Edwards, Zion, Mobley, and Tatum. Tatum. Yep. No John Morant, no Trey Young. Interesting. Yeah. I went. Well, you know, you know how I, come on. Uh, Trey Young's Io DeSumo's son. I can't pick him up. <laughs> I, I went. I went. Luca, Tatum, Mobley, Cade Cunningham. I think. Mm-hmm. I think he's next. I think. I think next year he was when he takes a big leap. Okay. And then I. I thought about Anthony Edwards. I thought about Ja, and I was like, you know what? Let's just have some fun with this. I'm going size. Give me Scotty Barnes. Give me Ooh. Scotty Barnes. Okay. I'm drinking all the Raptors Kool Aid because I think Scotty Barnes has got it. And I. I would if I'm going to build my team around. Like, all right, this is the one player I'm putting my whole faith in. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick size over that, so that's why I have my team. My team is basically the the biggest I could have picked from, from this team, except for maybe Lamelo. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Steph Curry inked a billion dollar billion. Do we have to do the? Do we have a to, billy? Do we have to do the Austin Powers? Like, <laughs> One billion. One billion. Dollars. A billion dollar deal with Under Armour. According to Rolling Stone, quote, he's nearly locked a lifetime contract with Under Armour worth potentially more than a billion dollars. Um, Hayes. Count it up. Where did Under Armour find a billion dollars? <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe they're selling more shoes than what we realized, brother. I, I have no idea. Like, I, I was telling you before we started recording, like, Under Armour makes some of the ugliest shoes I think I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Um Hey, there are a lot of you kids know, that want to be like Steph, so maybe they're buying. Maybe they're buying more under. My son got a pair of Under Armour shoes once to play basketball, and I was like, "These are ugly," but he liked them. So <laughs> maybe there's a lot of par- parents doing that. So. Under Armour had my um, suburban like high school on just absolute lock with the Under Armour like the dry fit shirts, like the long uh, sleeve, like oh sense. my, every single person in my entire school was wearing those all the time. Um, and so maybe they're still banking off of that that they just, they just sold so many of those. I just looked at it just to, just for ish and giggles. Uh, <laughs> Under Armour made five point two seven billion dollars last year. That's where they found so they it. Give, That's they're, they're giving got. one fifth of their overall revenue to Steph Curry. Okay, well let's be fair to Under Armour. They're not giving it to them all at once. It's not a lump I mean, sum. It's, true. it's not. They're yeah, just not showing fair, up with like fair. multiple. How many Brinks trucks would it take for a billion dollars? <laughs> Two, three. Probably three. How much can a Brinks truck hold? I love I love Google. <laughs> Random Google searches. That's my life. How much money can a Brinks truck hold? According to Mel Magazine, I don't know if I trust this, but half a billion dollars, up to six hundred oh, wow. million, according to this website. Okay. Yeah, half a billion in a Brinks truck. So when you talk about backing up the Brinks truck, like they did, literally did that for Pat Mahomes. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, give me a give me a count it up. Uh let's see what I got. So um John Morant said the last year was their their year, which I disagree with that. But my uh how many playoff series does, does John Morant and the Grizzlies win next? Year? Count it up. How many playoff series? Okay, so they got their one this year. So they last year, the year before last, they played that jazz series. He had 40 points in game one. They got the win. They were feeling really good. And that, or they, he had forty points in game two. They won game one. This year, they finally got their their series win. Next year, the West is tougher. I don't think they get a series win next year. Next year, you don't think they win a single series? No, I'm going. Season. I'm going. I'm taking the if if it's a half. If I'm going over under a half, I'm going <laughs> under the half. Going oh up? wow, I'm going over. I'm going over. I Neither think, of us picked to build around John Morant though. That's true. That's true. I love John. John Morant's one of my favorite young players. It's just it, with the makeup of my team, I was being very uh, clear direct but uh i i i think they make it to the second round next next year and i think they get eliminated i, I it's hard to, to so guess on the this same now. thing yeah i think they i think it's much the same like how much did they really improve this offseason they didn't they got worse yeah so 
I, I, I think I think with improvement from John Morant, I think John Morant's going to put up uh, a huge season next season. I think they still make it out the first round, but I don't give them much out of that. All right, I got two more. Dwayne Wade is reportedly leaving TNT. Count it up. <laughs> more likely that Dwayne Wade left TNT or that TNT decided that we're going in a different direction. Air quotes. Air quotes. Anyone who actually watched Dwayne Wade on TNT last yes, season, I think Tuesdays. they know what this was. He was terrible. <laughs> like, like <laughs> he was terrible. So, I, you know, what are they using in the WNBA now? A contract divorce. Him and TNT <laughs> had a contract divorce. That's the Tina Charles was. divorce. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was that threw me off this year in the WNBA. And then I, I so Tina Charles played for the Phoenix Mercury. The Phoenix Mercury had like this worst dysfunctional season of from hell. And then, then Tina Charles had a contract divorce with the Suns. I brought it up to the next who runs our Locked On WNBA show, mm. and, uh, and they were like, "Oh yeah, this happens all the time." Like, what do you mean this happens all the time? <laughs> contract divorce? That's like a normal thing in the WNBA. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think that, I think TNT was like, "Hey, do you want to say you quit?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah <laughs> like, I'd rather yeah. say that than get fired. <laughs> Isn't he like part owner of an NBA team too? Does he have like some ownership in the team, or did I make that? Uh, up? Yeah, Jazz. Oh, well, Jazz, right? Well, he he has a lot to focus got, on over there. Well, so maybe him that's... and Gabrielle <laughs> Union always got stuff going on. So that, yeah, you know? that's that's true. Focus on that front ways focus and back. That. Um, <laughs> last one. Kyle Kuzma was walking the runway at New York Fashion Week. Uh, I got a. I got a picture of him. Let's throw it up on YouTube. Uh, this is what Kyle Kuzma is looking like. So, um, Count it up. is this more Game of Thrones or Rings of Power? Have you been watching those shows? Oh, of course. Come on now. Yeah, is, this, does this scream to you, is this giving more Game of Thrones or giving more Rings of no, Power? No, this this is this is giving me the the guy in the gimp suit on American Horror Story. That's what <laughs> that's giving me. <laughs> like. <laughs> Or from Pulp Fiction, or from uh, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. yeah, that's that's oh what that's gosh. giving me. I I, I have no. This idea is an incredible thinking. segment for the audio listeners. But he's <laughs> he's wearing like this. He's wearing like a black sweatshirt, basically, and over top of it is like this. This is this is going to be one of the best moment of my career is trying to explain what Kyle Kuzma's <laughs> wearing. Black sweatshirt, gray like tank top, but it, it's almost like a sheen, like a sheer kind of gray. And then he's wearing like you know those really puffy coats yeah. that you wear in, in winter. Around his waist. He's wearing that, but it's more like a dress. And, this is, and he's wearing, and he's got the hood up. So it's like medieval, but it's also like, like pillowy, like it's like a like mystical. It's very interesting. There's a guy behind him that looks like he's basically like he murdered Baymax, and he's wearing his skin like. <laughs> on, like, <laughs> like <laughs> Oh man, that's like this is this is horrible. Like what I blame all this on Kanye West. What Kanye West has done to the fashion industry has just been ridiculous. He like, was one time he just put out college dropout and we've just never been the same since. The flashing he was we were not ready for these type of flashing lights. No, no, not at all. Not at all. There you go. That's locked on NBA. Go check out Lockdown Bulls. They got great stuff going on there. Pat and Hayes have you locked down every single day. We have you on Locked On NBA or Locked On Mavs. So go check out that as well. We're also doing the Bet Online Top 50 Most Valuable Players starting on September 19th. So next week we will be starting that right here on Locked On NBA. So subscribe to the, the channel. Subscribe on the podcast, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On NBA. Boom.